And welcome to Demiplane, and welcome back to the Claw Firm, Feather, Whisker, and Horn. I'm your Game Master, Mark Meir, and these are our player characters. Let us meet them, shall we? Beginning with Xander. Hello, I'm Xanderific, or at Xander, uh, two with two R's and one F online, <laughs> before I said my username as my actual legal name. I'm Xander Genre, but you can find me at Xanderific. <laughs> Uh, and I'm playing Cornet, the Silent Priest, a Tengu Cleric. Blue Jay. Hi, I'm Blue Jay. You can find me and all my links um, on Twitter at Blue Jay underscore 712. Um, and I will be playing Violette, the Garish Thief, a swashbuckling tang uh, Tengu, um, Blue Jay flavored, of course. Mm -hmm. How could I resist? <laughs> oh, and also both of my pronouns and my characters are he, him. And uh, my pronouns and my characters are she, her. Lovely. Uh, let's move on again. We'll go in the order in my screen. Well, it'll be different every time, folks. Different every time. Uh, uh, we will hear from Erica. Hi, I'm Erica Fermina. My pronouns are she, her. You can find me across all social media at A Style Pixie. I will be playing Kala Lily, who is a tiefling summoner. And I'm just seeing that I haven't put my teeth in yet. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be time there'll be time. commitment <laughs> yeah. oh and both of our well, pronouns are she her <laughs> lovely uh aliza hello i am aliza pearl uh my pronouns are she her and you can find me on instagram and tiktok at aliza pearl a-l-i-z-a pearl and then uh no sorry on instagram and twitter aliza pearl tiktok i am the real aliza pearl and i am playing pegasi Pronouns she, they. Pagasi is a Konrasu alchemist with an emissary background. And Konrasu is a puzzle wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in a mystery. Wrapped in a tree. Wrapped in, wrapped a, tree. In a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and Jody. Hi, I'm Jody Hauser. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jody underscore Hauser, Instagram at the Jody Hauser, and Jody Hauser everywhere else. I am playing Hortense Pricklepaw, our bookish cat folk magus. And this is the team that has been assembled by the Claw Firm, Ms. Feather, Mr. Whisker, and Mr. Horn. Most of you have spent your childhoods being raised by these individuals. One of you recently came into their employ. And now all of you are preparing to set out on the very first of the tasks they have set before you to relay a package to a goblin known as Scudge, a client of the firm. There was apparently some dispute as to the legal ownership of whatever is in this box. And the law firm in question, Feather, Whisker, and Horn, was successful in pleading Scudge's case. You're all assembled outside of a carriage, one that's been given over to you for your use, a company car, if you will. And you know that you are going to be traveling from Absalom, the city at the center of the world, into the wilderness beyond. Your patrons the members of the Claw Firm, though they don't necessarily use that name uh, in common parlance, 
have given you what equipment you have requested. Within limits, of course. Uh, there was some mention of healing potions. And yes, they have provided essentially a little first aid kit for you with four healing potions. The first number that was written down, not the yeah. number that was, <laughs> that was uh, later added to. But what other sort of equipment did everyone request? Pagasi would like a bomb launcher. Ooh! <laughs> uh, so a... Uh, they don't necessarily have that off the rack in Absalom. What sort of uh, bomb launcher? A sling, perhaps? Is that what? Uh, are you cap You're capable of using a sling, aren't you? Um, yes, I can use simple weapons. Um, and let's see, there is a bomb launcher listed here. Oh, okay, uh, all right. So I can. So maybe they do have it off the rack. Well, you got I can, the stats for it. Yeah, I, let me here. Let me just find it and read it to What's... you and. What's the do they do they have the value for that listed? It might take them a while to get some, mm -hmm. something so spe uh, specialized. It is 20 GP. Hmm. With the resources of the claw firm behind you, I think that that could be made available, especially because you would demonstrated your ability to create explosives from your the own uh, from the sap of your exoskeleton. Uh, so yeah, I'd say they've made that a priority and the bomb launcher is yours. Yes. And thank you to Pathfinder Nexus for having this yeah. information available <laughs> at one's fingertips. <laughs> Any other uh, specialized equipment that wasn't already covered in your uh, initial character sheets? Um, I think like I I have the general generic weapons that um, I might need. I feel like uh, Violet would probably like put down a lot of like really ridiculous things on the list. Yeah, and none of the ridiculous Cornet, things. Yeah, none of them showed up. I think Cornet would like erase them or like yeah, just not, like the it would ones, never get to the view. <laughs> the ones that have are left are basically like rope, uh, maybe a grappling hook and some torches. Yes, those are certainly you know standard adventuring equipment. Uh, all of mm -hmm. that sort of thing is available. You all, I'd say they included a fifty foot length of rope and some torches for everybody, and you know what, a leather backpack. Can I have a cool cape? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'd that say one let I'd, I'd say there's there's every likely because you were allowed to you know go back to your homes and collect things that you needed. So uh, you I'd say it's very likely you had a cool cape in your possession unless you specifically want to get one for the occasion. I mean, she would request a cool cape at every opportunity. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because she yes. likes stuff. Yeah, so you, um, this is this is a bespoke cus, uh, cool cape that has been provided <laughs> for you specifically for this mission. Sick! I feel like this is the same excited that I get so shopping for office supplies. Like, I get weirdly excited about post-it notes and, like, <laughs> pens. <laughs> Me too, Xander. I love post-its. <laughs> uh, but speaking of this cool cape, what makes this cape so cool? As so, I said, this was this was a bespoke cape, so you could pretty much ask for what you would like. So she had like you know normal everyday walking around type capes, obviously, because you know it gets cold, it gets rainy, you know don't want to get super muddy because then you have to. I mean, Cornet has to wash your clothes. Um, but she requested like a swashbuckler's cape, which mm -hmm. has like it's on the one shoulder and then like strapped over the chest, so her 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 her, her um, rapier arm is free. Um, but it's covering like the other shoulder. It has like, maybe she said that it was like really important that she like look the part. Um, so that like, I don't know, she made an excuse for it and evidently it was enough to get it on the sheet. Um, but like she wanted it to have like impressive, um, I don't know, like ribbon edging or like to look professional. Like she wants to look as though she is, um, I don't know, capable of of doing dashing feats of daring do, as it were. Of course, and it certainly gives that impression. It is a very cool cape. And um, yeah, as we're gathering around this, she has also tied the feather that she stole from, uh, not the feather, the ribbon that she stole from Kalili, um is is like tied like around her neck. <laughs> In a very obvious way. Super obvious, yeah. Very well. Uh, so, Kalalili, I'm not. I'm going to say that yes. When you see Violette as you're all gathering, that is that that is apparent. It is obvious. Uh, I'll let you decide how to react to that, or whether you immediately go, "That's my ribbon," or I have a ribbon like that. <laughs> um, Kalalili knows uh, Violette pretty well. I feel like, or knows 
her uh, tendencies. So she'll kind of just like scoot over and be like, if you wanted a ribbon, you could have just asked. And Violet, like preening a little bit in her new uh, cape, is just like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it's just okay. like, you know. <laughs> Uh, Obviously, whenever... if you're gonna steal stuff, you can't like ex like accept that other people know that you're stealing. Cala <laughs> Lily will just wink at you. <laughs> and and uh, you actually are within earshot of Mr. Horn uh, when this ha you do hear him sort of like brruh, brruh, larceny, larceny, because <laughs> of course he's the one who bought that ribbon in the first place. Uh, is there any other specific uh, requests for equipment from the other folks? So, so we've got a bomb launcher. We have a cool cape. There were healing potions and, and yes, bandages and, and typical uh, medical supplies mm -hmm. as well. I will say, if you want to look at the coolest cape, the Pathfinder Nexus swashbuckler and art is just chef kiss. Honestly, she's wearing the cape. Okay, so it's it's actually that cape. It's that like, cape. Yeah, it's, 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 that it's cape. red and yellow and it has fringe <laughs> on it. And it's excellent. Um, I will say that I pro Kelly Lily probably doesn't need anything special, but she will customize the uh, the uh, weaponry that she has. Like she's got a light mace, so she will probably just add, you know, streamers to it. Little like her then hanging course, off. Yeah. Like, like, you are, painted. You are you are completely free to bedazzle your weapons as as you <laughs> see fit. Like the handlebars of a kid's bike, but just a mace. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and actually, I should mention that uh, a lot of the sort of standard equipment, uh, you know, the backpacks and things like that, uh, they do have the crest of the law firm, mm. uh, the Feather and Whisker Horn logo, uh, which is, it's it's really well designed. I don't have a picture of it because then I would have had to draw it. But yes, it's, it's, very, it's very good. It's very good. Uh, and uh, anything for Hortense? Uh, Hortense realizes she brought books and like, no weapons, no armor, anything. So she's like a little bit embarrassed that she doesn't feel prepared, but she's, you know, sort of goes up to Mr. Whisker and very quietly, um, I think, you know, some, some studded leather armor is probably good. Maybe a scimitar. Um, I think shurikens <laughs> would work better as bookmarks than the dagger because the hilt is kind of like uh, damaging the spine a little bit. Uh, maybe a crossbow too. He's sort of smoking his pipe and blowing smoke rings as you say this, like, hmm, yes, I uh, anticipated your need. And as he steps aside, he's wearing a cloak, so he, when he steps aside, you see there is a crate, and it basically has a nicely folded uh, or laid out set of studded leather armor. It has the shurikens, it has the scimitar, and the various things that you have requested. Thank you. <laughs> you are most welcome. Hortense, you are stepping forth from the library, as it were. Things in the world are not always as they are in books. I mean, they're not worse, are they? Because a lot of the books I read, stuff is, like, there's just so much murder and uh, <laughs> political upheaval and wars and lots of poison for some reason. Um, ah, well, then perhaps I should say... Things are not always as bleak as they are in books. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, but if, if we have to kill anyone, is the liability on the firm or on us? I mean, I'm sure we'll have really good representation either way, but... Are you planning on some sort of murder spree? No, just... Violet, like, brandishes of... Fisticuffs, and most of us <laughs> have really sharp things in our fists, so... You know... We would not stay your hand if you are defending yourself. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yes. Uh, don't necessarily go looking to pick fights. No. So many, so many young people these days. It's all about looting the bodies. I hadn't even thought of that. I mean. Mm, yes. Well, let's try to keep that sort of activity to a bare minimum, shall we? I mean, Violet will probably handle all that anyway, so. Mm, yes. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, speaking of Violet and uh, Cornette, uh, Ms. Feather is sort of fussing with 
uh, your robes just sort of like, you know, brushing the shoulders off and straightening lapels and that sort of thing. Like, now then, uh, yes, yes, Cornet. Uh, well, don't you look grown up? A gesture for adult. <laughs> yes, but, um, well, it, in some ways, uh, I shall always see you as, well, and she just sort of leans forward and embraces you in her big feathery arms. Oh, he takes it and res and gives back a squeeze in response. Then she turns to Violette. It's like, well, um, that is quite the cape you have commissioned, my dear. Thanks. Hmm. Um, no, uh, I could admonish you to behave, and um, I'm sure you would ignore me. Uh, so I shall simply say, <clears throat> do be careful. And she also just, she hugs you also. She's probably taking you by surprise. Oh. And like, uh, Violet's, you know, new, new to Cape, like arms get a little like tangled in it. So she can't really like, you know, fully return, but she is kind of like, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be, I'll be, um, I mean, I'll be careful. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Rolls her eyes like, that's not what we're going to do. Come on. This is an adventure. I, I'm sure <laughs> I don't need to remind you to take care of each other. On that, Cornette will join in so it's a three-person hug. Oh, well. Hmm. Oh, hmm. come on. You're going to wrinkle my cape. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, as we pull back from this uh, uh, group hug, uh, Mr. Horn is standing beside Callow and he's like, mm, raw sentiment, mm, I tell you. Mm, uh, Lady, um, I have prepared you as best I can for what you will now face, uh, which is to say, the world. I know you've lived in the world and we're in the world now, but uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. And then yes. she just gives him a hug. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> yes. Uh, yes. Though uh, you do detect a little bit of sniffling from him. I know. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, Gigvit is standing near Pegasi and it's like, so you got got yourself a bomb thrower, did you? Yes, I recognize during our demonstration of skills that I do not have the skill of accuracy. And oh, so I hope that, that this will help. Does that help you? I could set up some more straw guys if you want. I think it's all right. We are intending not to engage in combat. So this oh, is yeah, just... I, I think that sort of thing is to be avoided. Right. It is all just precaution. That said, do you think I should get armor? Arm aren't you wearing armor now, kind of? Yes, I I suppose you could think of my exoskeleton as armor. Do you think it is sufficient? I, I don't know. You, you want me to hit you with something to see how it goes? Yes, I, I would like that. All right. Um, uh he sort of rummages around and just picks up essentially like a big scroll and rolls it up and then ah, have at me. Uh, what is your AC, by the way? 13. He rolled a natural one. He sort of trips. <laughs> I know that's not a critical fail necessarily, but he does not have a big bonus. And you bet you went 13. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say that counts as a critical failure. I'm going to fudge. I don't think it's technically a critical failure. I'm fudging it a bit, so it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he sort of, like, trips over himself and falls down, lands in front of you. It's like, hey, that me? <laughs> Please do not take offense, but are you are you a trained warrior? I am not. I am not. I am, I am neither of those things, trained or warrior. Ah. <laughs> So perhaps we should do this, this experiment with someone who does have some training in fighting. Um, is, there, is this an earshot? Probably, uh, yeah. I would say so. Yeah, you're all sort of gathered around the carriage. So I'm, with your permission, of course, Fagasi, can I attempt to throw a dagger at you? Yeah. I'm going to go for like a, you know, 
well, like you said you could grow, grow your hands back before so i'm gonna go for like that area i think <laughs> <laughs> we'll see I'm, if i, I, we, I guess we'll, we'll see. soon see we'll see <laughs> I, I don't know if, there, if i don't know if pathfinder has a like i'm not intending to kill you um, okay. kind of, um uh, i mean you yeah, I'd, I'd say, I'd, it's hard to do that with a thrown dagger. I say like I mean, you can you... throw it to where it hits with the not the knife part, but the oh yeah, the try hit, to hit with the, the pommel. Hilt. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. I'm just let's, gonna uh, let's try that up. <laughs> let's roll that up. Um, I got uh, twelve, so plus seven is nineteen. Ooh. And you've got an AC of thirteen. Yep. Yeah, that's a there's a clear <laughs> as the pommel of the dagger impacts uh your and because uh, i'm i don't have panache or anything like if it was gonna be doing damage um i don't know i cannot do damage for the cinematic purposes of this yes yeah then yeah it's just damage (laughs) what kind of damage would you have done oh it's 1d4 so okay yeah it's a one so you may infer from that what you will yeah "Hmm, we'll see how how well i would stack up you know it's yeah well um uh, you know, you present a pretty wide target. Just yes. letting you know. Well, I do have a mutagen that can make me less hard to hit. So, oh. I think... Um, oh, don't have me. that one. I'd take the one that makes you more hard to hit. <laughs> more hard to hit, yes. I'm, I, I confuse the two terms, more and less. Mm, you see, yeah. in the cosmos, sometimes something is more, but it also can be less. It can take up more space, but it can be less mass. And therefore, I confuse the two concepts often. You just see Templeton's eye, or sorry, Templeton. <laughs> Templeton? <laughs> uh, that's, that's whose voice I'm using, let's face it. You see Gigvit's eyes just sort of widen as he sort of looks off and seems to ponder infinity for a moment. Huh. Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right about that. Now then, are we prepared? I feel prepared. Good. Violet, yes. Up yes. Let us not dilly dally any further, shall we? We expect great things from you, young ones. Yes, uh, great things. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Uh, Who is going to drive this carriage? Good question. Oh, wait, I feel like what happens is Violet would like automatically clamber up into the driver's seat, <laughs> but I think everyone knows that her obeying the rules of the road and being <laughs> safe is probably not the most certain thing. Maybe uh, Pegasi doesn't know that, but uh, if anyone has ever been around her or driving any vehicle, it's definitely more precarious. So I'd say I'd she say goes there, for it as though she's probably, gonna... I'd say there's probably a fair chance that mm-hmm. this sort of thing has happened before with Violet, uh, not behind the wheel, but at the reins. Uh, I'd say we flash briefly to a scene of all of you again, or the four of you younger, uh, just screaming in the back of the <laughs> <laughs> or a wagon, yeah, an, an uncovered wagon, yeah, a little right. wagon, heading down a hill and a bunch of supplies flying out the back. <laughs> Uh, and she's just like holding the reins like ah! <laughs> and then we we cut back to Violette starting to head towards the seat of the, the driver's seat of the carriage does Violet. anyone say anything or raise any objections uh, Violette I think you drove last time someone else should uh, uh, get, a, get a turn maybe <laughs> obviously if I drive we'll get there much faster but will we get there in one piece? Yeah, we have to protect the the the, the package, right? So. At that, uh, Cornette turns to Miss Feather and uh, gestures the package. Yes, of course, already secured within the carriage. At that, Cornette's going to go inside the carriage and sort of check on the secure nature of this package. Uh, Yeah, it seems to be a locked strong box uh, of fairly good manufacture, uh, good workmanship. You could tell it would be quite sturdy. There is a big lock on the front. And you also see that the seal of the firm is placed both on the lock and on the lid of the box. Uh, Ms. Feather fishes into her pouch and pulls out a key, which she puts into an envelope, uh, 
pulls out, you know, the little wax seal, drips some wax, the whole bit, seals it within the envelope. This is to be given to Mr. Scudge, our client. Cornette will take it and put it within the robes. And uh, as you see, uh, as you're collecting it, you see that the wax seal also bears the, the firm's uh, seal. Oh, it's and... still hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she blows on it a bit. How, how does an owl blow? Yeah. She, she waves it with her, with her yeah, feathery okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fans it. Like, she, she blows on it. One, two, two three, three, three. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and hands it back to you. Uh, and with that, uh, the three senior partners uh, just sort of form up. Uh, Gigvit sort of runs ahead and opens a large gate. And uh, have we decided who's driving? I'll I'll drive. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. So you climb up into the driver's seat, and uh, there's room for another person to ride up front. And then there is, is of course, room in the carriage itself. Uh, Cornette is going to take the secure position near the package and is mm -hmm. like monitoring so that it's not too bumpy. It's very, it could be very fragile. We don't know what's in it. So constant vigilance. I mean, Violette, if she's not driving, would still love to be outside of the carriage. You take, you take shotgun or crossbow, I, love, I guess. I would love to take shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Where would Pegasi fit? I like that uh, maybe there's a sunroof. <laughs> yeah, I'd say there is a sunroof. That's where Pagasi is. By the way, Pagasi is six seven. I don't think wow. I've seen that before. Is Pagasi capable of like bending down or? Yeah, yeah. Pagasi is flexible to some okay. extent. But for now, at this point anyway, Pagasi will sort of go into the main body of the carriage and then up through then, the sun. So part of you is sticking up through the sunroof. Yeah, I think it wouldn't be comfortable for Pagasi to sit like a human. Mm -hmm. But they can bend in that way if they need to. So yeah. So you're actually you're sort of like in the middle of the carriage underneath the yeah. sunroof. Yeah. Like a yeah, kid with a head out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Admiring this the countryside. Yeah. Nice trees here. And Hortense and Cal, uh, uh, and uh, sorry, uh, Cornette are of course inside. The indoor kids. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and so, so here now. Mm -hmm. With uh, a movement of the reins and a whistle to the horses, you are off. As you move through the streets of Absalom, again, you've grown up in this city, so you are used to its sights and wonders. Uh, but Pegasi, this is really quite amazing. I'm not sure. How much of Absalom do you think you saw before coming into uh, the care of the, of the claw firm, as it is sometimes known? Probably low to medium knowledge of the city. I th I think Pegasi probably f spent a lot of time wandering around and observing before they chose a s the square that they were going to post up in and lecture in. Yes. So you have seen not just the places that you spoke, but you did get to see the rest of the city. So again, these mm -hmm. sites uh, which might strike a newcomer to Absalom as fantastical are eh, pretty much every day to all of you. As you see demonstrations of magic upon the streets, you can see uh, objects flying through uh, through the air up to higher spires. And the buildings themselves are, of course, magnificent. But as you leave the city gates, I wonder, among those who've grown up here, how often have you left the city? Like, even Violette, who is quite adventurous, my, uh, does seem uh, more inclined probably towards urban adventures, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I feel like even though Violet probably leaves the sanctuary of the the Guardian's homes and the claw firm like more than other people, um, still within like the every, city, there's every enough. Every night, probably. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. enough to do. Like, I can't imagine her willingly going outside the city walls, especially not alone. I think there's probably some kind of, um, like, it, it feels different. Like, disobeying within the city is one thing. Disobeying outside of the city is something entirely different. So, yeah, she's probably stayed inside unless she left with Miss Feather. I'd say there were probably some supervised visits, especially in your early education. Uh, just, again, learning of nature, uh, simple uh, flora and fauna identification, that sort of thing. 
But yes, this is certainly the first time that you've all been out of the city alone. Uh, Pegasi, of course, you journeyed here, so leaving this particular city is not as unusual a thing for you. But as you pass through the massive gates and you see the guardsmen on its walls and leave the protection of the city behind, even though you're still in very much populated areas with small villages and towns and farms, that begins to fall away slowly as you travel. And you find yourselves essentially, for the first time, alone in the wilderness. Of course, there's opportunity along the journey for conversation. We've got uh, two people up front and three in the carriage. So I think we'll begin outside the carriage as we move along these country roads, which are giving way to trails. Um, Violet, starting inside the city and like extending out, is basically using this like she's dreaming that this is like a like she's part of a traveling performance troupe and so she's telling a bunch of stories that she's heard like in um like bars and taverns in streets like with groups and of of uh like theatricals that she's learned and she's just like basically repeating everything she heard just in a similar way to a bird like picking up someone's um like uh noises like uh one of my friend has a bird that does the microwave noise um (laughs) but like basically that's what she's doing is like she's entertaining herself mostly but also maybe um callily by telling all of these stories and like maybe occasionally also juggling (laughs) (laughs) and when you tell these stories are you repurposing them into your own stories as some people oh 100 percent. this this happened to me as opposed to my stories yes Mm -hmm. and she sometimes like stands up or like does and then probably is is calmed down to not frighten the horses um (laughs) but yeah she's she's putting on a whole show so, uh, Kelly, this has been, uh, you know, your uh, your traveling tunes for <laughs> for this journey. Uh, these stories, uh, mm-hmm. which I suppose you can choose to believe or not, and oh, Kelly, one hundred percent believes them. She's like, oh, <laughs> I won't even. Audience. That's fascinating. I won't even. I won't even ask for a deception roll. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, and the juggling, I think, is simple enough that again, that that's something that you do to entertain folks all the time. So, oh yeah. You know, I'm a performer. <laughs> uh, does Callalily share anything uh, as you know, as you do when you're on a road trip? The the driver or the person riding shotgun. Any anything that Callalily shares on this journey? Um, I feel like Callalily has very few stories. So when she does share a story, it's probably one that Violette has heard before. She's just like, you know, I was found in these woods. Oh, no, I mean, I found myself in these woods, and then I came into the town, but um, I haven't really gone any much further. You've had a much more storied life than I have. Like, this is just so fascinating. Do you know what's over there? And she'll just start, like, asking questions about, like, random things, you know, like, if we pass, like, an old tower. Did you go there? And uh, Vila immediately uses it as an opportunity to make something else up. <laughs> like of course I have I will never say no I didn't do something it's much more entertaining to say yes I did do something uh, any particular examples uh, you'd care to provide of like so what what are some of the tall tales oh so uh, what, like, what sort of claims to fame is uh, she laying claim to so I think at one point like we passed some kind of like run down mill or something um, and there's the like, oh, like, what is this? Like, do you know anything about this place? And Violette um, like, like looks, you know, very dramatically. And then she says, ah, yes, no, I remember that place. There was one like, like foggy night where me and well, some ruffians, but aren't worth naming. Um, we ventured out into into the fog and the cold because we'd been told that this place was haunted. And um, so we we had to go. But of course, it wasn't really haunted. There was brigands that were living there and 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 they had uh, they'd captured a, a, a family of uh, of rat people and we freed all of them. I did obviously most of the work because I am exceptional in every way. Mm-hmm. Um, and the brigands were so scared that they all just fleed from me 
at the first at the first vision of my exceptional um, prowess um, and uh, left uh, a barrel of, of, of apples and chocolate. So, wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Kalalali is getting the impression on this ride that Violet has had a long and uh, distinguished adventuring career already. Uh, mm-hmm. after his, yeah, very, various adventures are being told of. Uh, how does Kalalali feel? Because as you mentioned, this is the area that you were found in, that you found yourself in, wandering. She is... Kalalili is is a little nervous just to be venturing back out, but she's also very excited to maybe maybe she'll find something, maybe she'll see something that sparks a new memory, um, because she really doesn't have a lot of a lot of memory before waking up in the in the forest. So she she does have that that nervousness of 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 possibly finding something, but also maybe a little scared too, because she likes her life, you know? And as Kalalili ponders this, and the stories continue, and the juggling continues, of course, uh, we move into the interior. Uh, I would think, now, here's a question. Uh, Is Pegasi uh, able to perceive what's going on? Like, if you've got part of you sticking out, like, where where is your sensory apparatus? Is is that... (laughs) So it's centered I around the orb, it, like it's... moving freely in the exoskeleton. Oh, I never thought of that. It's, it's definitely like the around. orb. The orb is the sensory, you know, part of mm-hmm. me. Um, so, and that's usually in the center, which I think would be sticking out of the carriage. Mm. Right. So you've been privy right. to all of it. So yes, but so. Yeah. Then essentially, because you're sort of sticking out of the sunroof, you've been privy to all of these stories as well. And any interjections or questions that you might have had for for the, our storyteller? Um, yeah, Pegasi has been listening to these stories and at one point does say, these brigands, do they give you any reason for their uh, thievery? What, what was their purpose? Why? Why? And I think that um, in a similar way to, like, this is a, a, a child's story, you know? Um, when questioned about something that she didn't, like, prepare for, um, she'll be like, why? You don't ask the brigands why they brigand. They're just, they're brigands. That's 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 what they do. They, 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 they steal from the the rich and give to the no wait that's a different story um and it's just like thrown off a little bit but then rapidly like gets herself back on her her tall tail and probably doesn't really like answer any specific questions and if you get too specific she she'll likely just um go on a completely different tangent like something (laughs) just she, she this is not to be investigated these are tall tales we take them as they are uh do you want uh if you're if you're truly probing uh i might ask for a deception roll from uh oh yeah from uh violette i smudged my orb i just realized oh no Uh i'm i'm willing to deceive let's see let's think i fixed it (laughs) i got a six and i have a plus five deception so that's 11 that's 11 what's your uh, what's your perception man Actually, that's going to be a little more difficult. I'm going to say that you can choose to vocalize this or not. Uh, you, Pegasi, you definitely get the impression that these stories are fabricated, and you're sort of like you know, once you start pulling at a thread, you, ju- you just internally you sort of realize, oh, there's lots of contradictions in this these stories, and it's like, wait, the, didn't she say that she had? arrived with a wizard and uh, things like that you know all these stories and then they, the wizard just... goes this completely away <laughs> yeah yeah. Goblin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh so yes i'll let you decide whether you want to challenge uh <sighs> violette on that or not but you do sort of you realize hmm this story sounds like a fabrication mm-hmm. i think bagassi will kind of just note that for later and keep listening <laughs> very well so let's move uh since we're 
basically centered on Pegasi right now, we sort of move down through the sunroof and into the interior of the carriage where Cornette and Hortense have been sitting through the whole journey. Of course, you are taking stops now and then, little rest breaks, but what's the tenor of the conversation within, you know, of course, conversation uh, is hard when one of the occupants has taken a vow of silence, but we know that Cornette is quite adept at confer at conveying his feelings uh, actually gesture cornet has turned the inside of the carriage into mission control uh there was a dossier that was provided about scudge the goblin uh and so there has been um parchment that's sort of pinned up on the inside of the walls and it has various lists that i think hortense and cornet are sort of going going over like what could potentially be in this box it might be something valuable what does Scudge look like? Is there like a drawing in the dossier? And like, where did and, they work? And uh, <laughs> these parchments that you have pinned up on the wall, are they connected by little bits of red thread? Red string. And, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. Smoking, you're smoking. And it's heavily. all no. around Pegasi's trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, all these bits of information. Uh, mostly it seemed to be uh, copies of uh, court documents and things like that. You know that this item was apparently in the possession of Scudge's father. Uh, and it was specifically his brother that had lodged some complaints, or, or rather brothers. Uh, he has a brother named Scorch. That's S-K-O-R-R-C-H-H. -H, two H's at the end as well. <laughs> uh, and a brother named Snicked. Uh, S-N-I-K-T. And a brother and named Wolverine's Sp Claws. <laughs> like the, that sound effect, yes. And one named Strunk. S T R O N K. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Cornette will sort of like point at these in the dossier and things like that whenever coming across a particularly insightful point. I mean, inheritance law is very interesting. And I think it really depends on what the father laid out in the will and all of that. Um, but it sounds like Scudge was the one who had the legitimate claim to, uh, you know, whatever's in the box. Yes, so. as a matter of fact, Hortense, <laughs> you, you being used to, uh, you know, speed reading and uh, grabbing pertinent details, it doesn't take you long to determine that, yes, uh, as far as legal standing, it looked like uh, Scudge, it was pretty open and shut. Uh, Scudge was named uh, in a perhaps unusual move. Uh, their father did, in fact, have a will and had uh, had actually employed Feather, Whisker, and Horn to draw it up. Uh, and this was contested uh, most vocally by these other three Goblin Brothers. Mm hmm So, I think it's, as they said, if they tried and failed to win in the legal system, they might try to succeed in the illegal system? A gesture of you got that. <laughs> uh, question, Hortense. Do you have a relevant uh, uh, lore skill? Uh, I know you're a bit of a researcher. What's uh, What sort of lore skills do you have regarding, say, uh, documents and things like that? I have Cornette lore has... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have lore academia primarily. So There we go. And Cornette has and... lore scribing. Okay. I'd say that... I would probably allow one or the other of you to use aid to uh, to help out. Uh, and so you could get a substantial bonus, depending on your level. Or, of course, it is possible to also critically fail an aid roll, in which case you actually are an impediment to this. Or you can try alone. Uh, so I'd let either of you use those skills to pour through all of these documents and get some pertinent details about the case. So the lore scribing would be a plus five if it, that would add to you doing the actual role, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, it might uh, basic, essentially, uh, one of you, whoever is making the, the aid role, will have to beat, I'm going to say, and now this sounds, if, if you're used to fifth edition, this sounds very hard, but say a DC 20. Uh, in fact, I might even make a DC 18. So essentially, if you wanted to roll a coronet, you would add your plus five to a d20 and you're trying to beat a dc of 18. For aiding. Uh, for aiding to work. 
mm-hmm. course, if you roll, if you miss it by more than ten, that's a critical fail, and you'll actually be an impediment. If you critically succeed, then you'll actually give a plus two bonus. Okay, so oh, that's a fourteen on the die plus my plus five is nineteen. That makes there it. There we go. Very good. Uh, so you will get a plus two bonus to your academia lore, which is what Hortense? Uh, plus five also. So okay, so plus seven. seven. Oh, and I rolled a nineteen, so that is oh, a okay. Okay. Yes, uh, you, of course, have grown up uh, in the home of a practitioner of the law, and you picked up, not a trained lawyer yourself, but you picked up stuff by osmosis, and you quickly discern that these brothers essentially employed a sort of scattershot uh, legal uh, approach, like they tried to declare the will invalid first uh, for reasons of, you know, they, they just said their father was insane, then on technicalities, then on, you know, this and that. They were clearly just throwing a bunch of things at the wall to see what stuck. Uh, and it wasn't necessarily them, it was the firm they were employing was was uh, doing all of this. You also find in the court documents there's mentions of outbursts uh, from uh, all three of the brothers at some point, uh, and t- until they were actually removed uh, from the courtroom by the order of the magistrate. Oh, yes, it seems like they're, A, they hired terrible lawyers, at least, you know, compared to our firm, and B, uh, extremely volatile and disruptive, so don't think that bodes well for, you know, this being a completely smooth transaction on our end. Um, I think they they might try some. A gesture to concur. We're, 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 we can handle this, right? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As we're in, like, bumpy in the carriage, like, <laughs> trying to write <laughs> things down. <laughs> and, and I would think, uh, Pagasi, that, you know, you're probably able to, essentially, the equivalent of sort of, like, bending your head down a bit. Uh, if you want to join in on this at any point, you could sort of check in on them when they're... So I'd, I'd say that it's possible for you to know this information as well. Okay. So is there any point that you would like to interject or uh, uh, raise any observations of your own? Mm. Mm, uh, Pagasi, yeah, Pagasi, if Xander, that's how you probably know better than I do. If Konrasu can move the orb throughout their body. That's bodies. how I picture it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 So or, the orb or you moves... could just do the equivalent of like squatting down a bit. like just Yeah. Like the down. roots flatten out a bit. And... Mm-hmm. So either way, the orb comes down under the roof now. And having heard all this, Pagasi says, I find your conclusions logical. And I agree. Perhaps we should keep an eye out for siblings who may cause trouble. Wait, do you have any siblings? What is a sibling? Oh. When you are part of a mass and a consciousness that is the cosmos. That's it. That's all. Because he says to answer that question. <laughs> no. Does anyone answer that question or does it mm. hang in the air? Silence from Cornet, <laughs> <laughs> as might be expected. <laughs> Very well. For those who are on the outside of the carriage, and I'm going to say that you know, after making your statement, that this might also include Pagasi as you straighten back up or the orb moves. Um, for no reason at all. Uh, what perception scores does everyone have? Oh boy. <laughs> 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 My perception is a plus six. Mine's a plus four. Plus four here as well. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, I roll. Uh-huh. I like to roll dice for fun sometimes, you know, because I like me dice. Me too. Makes me nervous. Okay. <laughs> uh, Violet, Mm -hmm. as you pass a grove of trees, you realize 
there is something moving in the branches. Um, I mean, obviously, Violet has been in in the middle of a story for basically the entire trip. Cannot shut up. Um, and when she uh, notices this, she is continuing to talk. Um, like doesn't doesn't just like stop and alert whatever it is that she's noticed but she does like stand up and um like i don't know if this is like i'm envisioning that she could walk on the top of the carriage um Uh, yeah there is a sunroof as we established but you can walk around that yeah yeah so she like stands up and is still like telling the story and like including this like little meander in her mm-hmm. story um sure. but you she's just improv it, that in yeah. yeah yeah but she's doing it in order to get a better look at what this might be before she like alerts um the rest of the group and i think that um she does like let the tip of her rapier like she pulls it so that it's like more straight and she taps it on the inside of the skylight Mm-hmm. Um, and then is just still talking, but now like kind of circling and like obviously looking around. So yeah, I uh, would I would attempt to get a, a a sneaky little perception check there. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we're still going off this initial role, which uh, oh, okay, yeah, you know, this this particular individual did not really do very well at. So you <laughs> see a small humanoid figure. Uh, you can, it's really just silhouetted. It's kind of hidden by the leaves, but you do see it sort of crouch down and sort of hug the branch, but you know where it is. Mm. It is, uh, obscured. So it would have, you know, cover essentially, but, uh, you know that it is there due to that terrible stealth roll. I think that like Violet's instinct is like ah one foe I can handle one foe <laughs> oh, no. like and she's she's <laughs> waiting she's waiting for the ambush of brigands the like like you know so she's like oh one measly little like she's waiting like she she would rather them like come at her and be surprised by how cool and great she is mm-hmm. um but yeah she does take the opportunity to like. I mean, do that little tap to be like, you know, basically we're not alone or like keep an eye out or whatever on the inside of the um, thing. And then like she comes back around the other side of the skylight and um, just like lightly places her hand on Calla Lily's shoulder. Like as she like sits back down and like squeezes her shoulder and like pulls her back a little bit as though to be like, hey, let's slow down. Mm-hmm. Sure. For the, So for that entire sort of uh nonchalant sequence of events so, like i won't make you uh do like acrobatics to stay on the, the i would say it's and all more that. of a performance yes no. exactly. but uh what you're really trying to do is deceive this person uh-huh. who yeah. you've spotted so i'm Absolutely. gonna ask for deception please okay now that makes sense and you can also make a performance role for how i have the same business. bonus to both <laughs> oh, okay great because what is deception if not a performance Actors here, are here. liars. Actors are liars. <laughs> okay, so I rolled a 19 and I have a plus 5, so that's 24. Very nonchalant. Extremely nonchalant. Super you nonchalant. Weaved, you weaved it in perfectly, like the, all of your, it all just seemed like to flow very well into the story that you happened to be telling at the time. A- excellent. Excellent. I'm so good at this. No oh way. So, yeah. and in fact, uh, so nonchalant that, again, you've, you've already spotted this uh, person uh, or individual. Uh, and you actually see, you know, it sort of straighten up again. It, 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 from the reaction, you assumed it's like, oh, have I been spotted? And it's like, oh no, she's no so nonchalant, I can't possibly have been spotted. <laughs> it sort of straightens up again. Uh, so that is what is happening as you move uh-huh. down the road. Uh, the figure does not seem to be leaving the tree. You're just like moving past it. Okay. I mean, once we get, like, if we do pass it and it doesn't, like, come upon us or try and, like, thieve, um, if we get, like, far enough that I feel like we're out of earshot, then I would, like, duck my head into the back and be like, I think there was someone hiding from us back there. <laughs> Should we do anything? <laughs> because uh, she's not the voice of reason. Cornet mm-hmm. the voice of reason. <laughs> oh, no. I took a vow of silence. <laughs> <laughs> the, ah, voice the voice of reason, of reason is silent. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, like once we like rolled past it and it didn't like try and like jump under our carriage or like steal from us, then um, Violette would like 
um, turn around and like just poke her head in the skylight and be like, there was someone hiding in the bush back there. Should we, I mean, they didn't come upon us and attempt to thieve all of our valuables or anything, but I don't know. Just one of them or three of them? Just oh, uh, just a saw. point of order. Just uh, just so uh, it is, it wasn't a tree, just so you know. So, uh, but you can say Violet could just say. Oh, it was in a tree. Know. Yeah. Yes. Hiding in a tree. Hiding what, in a bush. What did it look like? Um. A... You would say a small humanoid, probably between three and four feet in height. Um. Again, I think. Who's the shortest of the group? That's Good a question. question. Who is the shortest of the group? Probably. I'm going to say Hortense. Hortense. Yeah. I would how immediately... tall is Hortense? Uh, I would think she would be just a few inches under five feet, maybe. Because catfolk aren't that much smaller than humans, are they? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'd say around uh, five feet. Yeah, that's, that's certainly within the range. Probably even on the small... You know those cats that... Just always look like kittens. Uh, yeah. Aww. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, I mean, let's see. Yeah. The, I, I, well over six feet for Pegasi and Callie's six feet plus with the horns. I'm and... checking the Tengu, but I think that they're like, uh, um, let's see what the Nexus says. They're size medium. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so, I, yeah. I think about I, the size I, of a person. So I'd be like, oh, probably around Hortense's size. <laughs> Just comparing it to like what I got here. Uh, Cornette will no point to the brother names on the piece of parchment and just tap on it. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, there are three brothers uh, that are after whatever's in the box. So, well, I mean, if it was one of those, then it was only one that I saw, at least. Well, and the mm, Mr. Scudge is a of the goblin humanoid type. Is that correct? Yes. So his brothers presumably also are. Did this person in a tree look maybe like a goblin? It wasn't that close. You want me to go back and get a better look? Callie will chip, uh, chip in and just be like, dude, uh, should I send the, uh, my uh, my idol on? Oh. Is your idol on sneakier than me? Probably not. Um, but it also has to stay within a hundred feet of me. Uh, so I don't know how far how far we've come since we've if, seen the. Uh... Uh, Violette still like hanging upside down through the skylight is like, if you wish for me to investigate, then I shall. And without waiting for anyone to answer, she like um, unbuckles her very garish cloak and like drops it in the skylight and then like jumps off the moving carriage and um, will go back towards where she saw the. Um, think sneakily, sneakily. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, first, give me acrobatics to uh -huh. dismount the uh, moving the carriage in in suitably impressive fashion. Um, I got a nineteen, and I have a plus seven for acrobatics, so Ooh. I would say oh. that's uh, suitably. Uh... Yeah, it's it's very impressive. There's Those definitely you... a flip in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you land without injury or incident, uh, and then. I assume we already know that you're yeah. out of sight so of that she's, particular tree. Yeah. She's gonna, so she's gonna attempt to sneak. Yeah, attempt to be a sneaky lady and not be seen by this person whom she saw. Who is driving the? Oh, so it's Kella Lily's driving the carriage, so we don't have to worry about that. Are Kella Lily? Are you going to bring the carriage to a halt? Or are you going to keep going down the path? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll definitely as soon as Blue Jay. Uh, sorry, as soon as <laughs> Violet hops off, I'll, I'll stop the carriage, Kella. Like, one. oh, whoa, you know. That's the problem with real dice. You drop them, they go somewhere. You don't know oh, where no. they go. Oh no. Um, uh, okay, so that one was not as good. Um, I got a four, and my stealth is plus seven, so that's eleven. I mean, was that the floor dice? No, I don't know where the that? floor dice is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you got a four, and what was your stealth? Seven. So eleven total. Eleven. Yeah interesting okay uh to keep up so. the charade sort of as we're stopped Cornette will sort of take things out as if we're taking a break like stopping along the road or something like I that. found the floor dice it Yay. wasn't 12 if that makes a difference <laughs> <laughs> hmm am i a very permissive gm <laughs> yeah that one that one got rolled first all right so you rolled a 12 <laughs> 
Good to plus, know. Plus seven. It still did I'm, roll I'm, first, even if I couldn't find it. <laughs> such a softy. Such a softy. Oh, but well, here's the thing. Do you want to use that four for your next D20 roll? <gasps> or do you want to use it for oh, this? Oh, yeah. I'll let, I'll let it. I will let that be. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, all right. So your next D20 roll yeah. will be a four. <laughs> Interesting. Devil's bargain. Uh, so you've got uh, a total so of 19. 19 for stealth. Yeah. Okay. Great. So. As you make your way back to that tree that you saw, or I assume you're not using the road, you're probably going. Oh, through I'm the trying underbrush. to. I'm trying to go through the brush. I'm trying to be sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. Running from tree to tree, uh, sneaking down. Maybe, may, maybe, yeah, maybe on, yes. maybe climbing a tree. I mean, I'm a bird. Maybe, you know, jumping okay. up to the tree and going along the um, branches and, yeah, being really cool. Lovely. Uh, tell you what, if you want to get up in a tree, please mm -hmm. give me athletics. Oh, I got a four. <laughs> um, oh, that's right. Yeah, there you go. So that's a good way to burn this. Yeah, <laughs> so I have a plus try to get up a tree for athletics. Um, so that you would get a be seven. seven. You, uh, you fall down on your butt uh, <laughs> out of this tree, but you land in a bush. Somehow, with that excellent stealth that you're still running on, you do it silently. Well, it's probably because Skyborn Hengu, when I fall, I, I fall with wings. So yeah, it's so probably you're just a like, little You flutter gentler. down onto your butt. You don't land on your butt. You're just like, boop, there you go. Uh, but as you're in the bushes, you hear whispering, sort of hushed tones, uh, harsh whispers. Which way do they go? Are they stopped up ahead now? All right. All right. Keep them under observation, they say. Observe what? Keep looking at them. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so Violet, um, being fairly confident in, in herself, the tree sliding down notwithstanding, I mean, obviously she was just meant to be here, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, she's gonna try and get like a, a, a closer look because the whole point was are they the goblins that were listed um, uh, so she will peer through the brush um, and see if she can get a, a glance at the persons that are speaking okay and after a moment looking out through between the leaves very stealthily mm -hmm you see a small green humanoid with large pointed ears, sharp teeth, and beady red eyes step out from behind a tree. I'm another one, Another one steps out from another tree and joins them, and they seem to confer. They're not, uh, they're not speaking at quite a high level as before, so you're not quite making out what they say, but you see one sort of like pointing and then one holds up a fist and goes like that. And I'm... then the other one, the other one points at the fist and goes like that. It's like, I was probably they seem, they, a goblin they... or two, right? Like, yeah, they, yeah. They there's certainly, there's plenty of, plenty of, plenty of goblins live in, in uh, Absalom. Uh, and, you know, pursue a wide variety of occupations within there. These goblins uh, are, they're definitely dressed for potential combat. They have mm -hmm. quivers of arrows slung over their backs, uh, along with bows. Uh, you can see that they have blades at their side. And uh, they seem to have uh, sort of camouflaged themselves slightly. Like they, One of them has like a sort of leafy branch strapped to its head <laughs> like that. Uh, they're wearing essentially, you know, <laughs> sort of medieval camo clothes. Uh, and one of them has sort of like big, uh, sort of like some kind of dark grease spread underneath its eyes for some reason. I don't know. That works at her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, they don't seem to have worked out their hand signals ahead of time because like they just seem to be confusing each other uh, until one of them just goes, talk plain. Shh. All right. <laughs> we don't make a move until we get to word. All right, then. Back to position. Looking only, no touch, no stabby. You got me? Mm. Until we get the word. Until we get the word. And then 
they creep back to their trees. And, and yeah, um, Violet will, you know, like listen for the situation as much as she can. And then when, when they go back to their trees, she will also withdraw and return to the carriage. And like the whole time when she like when she gets like far enough away from where she thinks she is, she's like imitating their voices, like until we get the word. Um, and like <laughs> just like because she's gonna incorporate this into her performances, obviously. Of course, of um, course. And so she like gets back to the uh, carriage, and is anyone like out of the carriage or? Um... Yes, uh, Cornette had sort of uh, was essentially faking a pit stop. I mean, you guys could actually have a pit stop if you yeah, want. like setting up campus. I want to sneak mm-hmm. up on whoever's out of the carriage. That's okay, um, uh, you know, give me a new stealth roll because okay. this is okay. uh, new targets of stealth, okay. essentially. Also, I like it's only our second episode, and we already have a Fugazi cosplayer. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Clearly, big fans. So Clearly I big got fans. a one. <laughs> oh, oh yeah! Like snap uh, and. You know, Cornette immediately hears this branch being stepped on. Because we're on edge anyway. <laughs> and it was it was like comedically loud. You're just like you feel like you cannot believe it's like rookie mistake. It's like you you're so embarrassed. And she like winces a little bit. And I was like, well, I guess you should be happy that that wasn't those goblins. Um. <laughs> anyway, there's goblins. So, and again, like a one isn't necessarily a critical fail in this, but you have a plus seven to stealth. So that yes. was an eight. Yeah. And what is your percent? What is uh, like, your perception? Plus six. So it would be 16. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was close to a critical fail. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine with not sneaking up on my, on my, on my friends, but it would have been funny. Um, anyway. Yeah. So she, she's just like, aren't you happy? I'm not a goblin. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. There's goblins. Uh, and then I'll pull out the piece of paper with the brothers' names on it and tap, <laughs> tap I on didn't the sign. Ask their names. I don't know what you want from me. They were goblins. They didn't refer to each other by name. They said they were gonna wait for the sign, and she just imitates already. She's like gone from like a fairly okay imitation to like feeding into her own like. So it's completely different as it. Uh, give me give me a performance roll to see okay. this, this new character that you're trying out. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Uh, a 14 plus 5. Okay. 19. The, it's pretty she's great. Got, she's got a great goblin voice, actually. Mm-hmm. But you've made it your own. You've made it your uh, own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes. Uh, and looks around and sees, any, has anyone else left the carriage? Like, uh, so do we want to... For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to say that you were all there. You were all essentially faking a pit stop. And yes, so you have all heard this information and may react as you see fit. So how many did you see out there? I saw two Hmm. um, hiding in various trees. There could have been Uh, another. And I'm going to say that be uh, your observation. You, you're pretty sure you heard at least three distinct voices. Ah, ah, no. She would go back. She would. She would think she'd go back through her new voice uh, voices for a performance. She'd be like, nope, wait. There was one that was a little bit pitchier. So that's three. Well, if that accounts for the three brothers, but they're waiting for a signal from someone. Um, perhaps they've hired outside help. Hmm. It's hopefully as bad as their lawyers were. I don't know. I mean, if they're waiting, then we might have the upper hand if we uh, pounce on them now. But if we want to be seen as a defensive party, then maybe we just wait and be prepared for uh, whenever. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't personally like the waiting part, but I mean, I grew up around lawyers, so. (laughs) I mean, yeah, Mr. Whisker told us to not look for a fight so I guess we let the fight look for us and then it's their fault they're at fault whether I have the uh, first move or not I'll still get the better of them so Mm -hmm. I'm not worried gets her cloak back from the thing and buckles it on (laughs) and just as a precaution Calla Lily will, will whistle 
just to bring her her eidolon out uh your eidolon appears what did we decide on a name for your eidolon Ooh. uh i've been mentally calling her shimmer <laughs> nice shimmer shimmers into existence <laughs> and uh takes the usual perch uh sort of like across your shoulders stretched out you said she's got a long serpentine form so mm -hmm. she sort of drapes herself uh, across the back of your neck and a looks up at you Victor. <laughs> yeah I give, I give and, a little scratch hmm. yeah she seems content with that but is also quite attentive seeing if you have any uh wishes or orders for her not yet i will let you know hmm. she nods and sort of like settles in uh anyone else want to make any particular preparations going back into the carriage cornet is going to sit on the box on the package itself just to make sure it's there and i'm going to take a spot inside uh next to one of the windows and have my uh crossbow loaded and ready yeah very well and are you said are you essentially then camping for the night for real but but all staying up and posting watch or mm. Are we far enough away that that would make sense? Uh, you think that you could reach your destination by nightfall. Hmm. If you kept going now. Maybe we should continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But keep an eye out. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Violette would choose to, like, um, instead of sitting facing front, like, sit on the back of the um, carriage um, and just be like, you know, Legs crossed, cape flapping in the breeze, rapier on her lap, um, ready just in case. Unusually silent. <laughs> and you will continue on your journey then. Mm -hmm. is okay. essentially like a periscope. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, we've still got... Uh, uh, Kalo will be driving. Uh, Pagasi is out through the sunroof, mm -hmm. and Violette is now on the back of the carriage, facing backwards. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, for no reason whatsoever. No reason at all. No reason. It's for the woodland Just creatures. Dice <laughs> ASMR. Oh man, again! I'm gonna say it's the same guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Violette, uh, you do spot. Uh, movement again in mm -hmm. another tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's basically, again, just the, the sun is setting now, but you can see through the rays, like, you do see a clear silhouette of big ears mm -hmm. and, on a small humanoid figure. She's gonna use the opportunity to, like, her, her performance in this case is to, like, pick her claws with her dagger threateningly <laughs> not looking in any direction just be like i am okay. a very strong and threatening person that you wouldn't want to attack well this would be an intimidation role. Yeah. yeah so many Cleaning rolls. The nails so on many a dice carriage that takes care um of. that is i rolled a 19 and my intimidation is only a plus two but it's still 21 so it's still 21 okay yeah you see that Big eared head just like <laughs> duck down immediately when you start it's doing like, that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> are, you, are you picking like like for your wings or your your the talent? Well, I, I was I was assuming like uh I don't know because the wings like we have hands right we don't just have like bird like wings like we have hands so I was thinking of them as being talent in a similar way to bird feet oh. um as opposed to being like wing like feather hands um because sure. i i don't know it's a it's, yeah so like that's what i was picking well looks looks like that's the way it is in this campaign yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh like i'm just gonna go take a look at the picture again because um obviously the pathfinder necklace has has pictures for everything which is handy mm -hmm. um yeah thank you pathfinder nexus it's mm. it, it shows them as having just like the bird face but um just humanoid, like dark hands. Sure. So I mean, they would probably have like nails and or claws. I think there are you can get attacks that are like claw attack and beak attacks. Mm -hmm. So 
I've got a beak attack. Yeah. We could just a... make it easy and say that everybody wears like white three fingered gloves. <laughs> <laughs> cuff on them. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, it says talent, Tengu. Your talents are every bit as sharp and strong of your, uh, as your beak. So some, I think that you can have um, talents, like fingers. Sure. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yep. And so, yes, this, uh, this intimidating move did seem to be successful. Uh, at least the goblin is trying to hide itself further. It didn't succeed, though, because it, it already botched that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you do know, in fact, that these are goblins at this point. So, it continues on that way. You can tell that you're being followed at a discreet distance. Uh, they're probably running. Uh, there may be some up ahead of you uh, in the tree line, mm -hmm. but you know that they are observing you at this point. Uh, within, I'd say, about a half hour of sunrise, of sundown, you arrive at the small farm, which has been indicated on your map is Scudge's home. Mm -hmm. And when you arrive, uh, you can see it's a modest farm. Uh, there do seem to be some very large hogs, uh, which are in a pen. And as a matter of fact, you can see a goblin uh, who's basically just th throwing a bucket of slop over the fence uh, for the hogs to eat. Uh, and as he turns from that task, he sees the carriage and just sort of waves. Wave back. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume you'll just approach him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He actually does seem, he sort of, you know, walks off to one side and drops the bucket and then he's sort of like wiping his hands on something. And he comes towards you. Uh, so uh, are you just going to pull up and get out? Uh, any, are you going to call to him from a distance? What would you like to do? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Hortense will lean out and go, uh, Mr. Scudge, uh, do you happen to have any identification? Identific what? <laughs> uh, any, any papers or anything to show your identity to make sure we're doing everything in due diligence? Oh, you from Fellow Whisker and Horn, right? Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I should have started with that. Yeah, you should leave with that, I think. Keep things professional-like. You could be brigands for all I know. Not many brigands go around in the carriages. Uh, it, this is our first, uh, uh, our first time out. Don't tell him that. Oh, this first, is your, not our first, first time out. Your first time out of where? The womb? <laughs> I'm just joking because you're young. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. um, you let me like... for my humor. Violet will like jump off the back and like have her cool cl uh, cape that she's really like impressed by and have her hand on the like hilt of her rapier and said, You Thor know we're still very capable. And she's like, This is acting. She's acting. Um, <laughs> and she says, Now, the woman's asked for your identification, sir. All right, all right. Now I need to get your cape in a tangle. That is a very cool cape, by the way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I suppose the least I could do is show you a little hospitality. All right, identification. Well, I'm Scudge, but uh, as far as identification, you wanted papers? Oh, uh, w were there any any drawings of Scudge in the court documents that right. we had? Like the, like the court artist... <laughs> you know what? That's usually for criminal cases, but oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to give you a first. Yeah, there was. Yeah, a sketch was. of the dossier. Uh, there's, a, there's a sketch uh, of a goblin uh, in a suit testifying. Uh, do you show him that picture? Uh, yes. He's like, right, that's me. There we go. Proof. <laughs> I like at Cornette and I'm like, I'm like, wait, I know how to prove it. Come with me. And he leads you back to this little farmhouse. Uh, out on! And he walks in through the door. You hear, like, some rummaging around. There's, like, clattering of pots and pans and the sounds of, like, drawers uh, slamming. He's like, here we are! And he walks out with, on a hanger, 
a goblin-sized suit. <laughs> so, and it and it does look like the same suit that's in the, the court drive. There we are. If we want to make it official. He uh, reaches into the pocket of the suit and pulls out a piece of paper and then grabs like a charcoal pencil and writes something on it and hands it to you and it says Scudge. <laughs> there we are. A piece of paper that says my name. Scudge. Okay, I think that I think that works for for us. Yes, we just want to make sure uh, we know there was some issues with your family, and we just wanted to make sure. Oh, that... don't get me started about that, lot. At that, Cornette will take the box, the package, and sort of give it to him. <laughs> like we don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. All right, come in, come in. We'll have a drink to celebrate, shall we? The conclusion of my business with your fine fur. You've done right by me. The least I can do is pour you something cool to drink, eh? That sounds like wonderful. Violette is 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 playing the you know the guard character, um, mm. and so she's she's standing there. You know, she's got her her hand on the on the pommel of her, her rapier, and she like stands by the door and says, "I'll keep watch." <laughs> all right, all right, all business. This one, eh? <laughs> and then Cornette will officially like bring the package gingerly inside wherever we're going. And who had the uh, envelope with the key? Cornette also Cornette. has that. <laughs> uh, so this uh, it is a small farmhouse, but you do note that the ceilings are relatively high. Uh, it's uh, uh, pro- you know certainly it would accommodate a human comfortably. Uh, you might slightly have to slouch Pegasi to get inside. Uh, but, uh, as the goblin seems to notice you looking at the scenes, like, oh, yeah, yeah, got this place off a human. Yeah, yeah, it's a little large for my taste, but I call it vaulted ceilings. <laughs> Very nice. Indeed. I had to get my own place, don't get along with my family, as you have discovered, no doubt, if you've been briefed at all. <laughs> yes, we have. Hmm. All of them. I wouldn't. Yeah. Well, I won't say what I wouldn't do. Suffice it. Well, no, I would say it in a more polite way. I would not urinate them if they were immolated. <laughs> <laughs> That's very graphic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to think so. I imagine plenty of graphic things I'd like to do to them. From outside the door, there's Violet's impersonation of of his brother's voices, <laughs> just like under her breath, like. <laughs> Are you saying it audibly? She's practicing, yeah, but she's 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 trying to be like all professional, but then like you know under her breath, like, <laughs> you know, if you have a good, if they have a good ear, then they might hear it. Eh, it's not that good. <laughs> yeah, they've got big yeah. ears. <laughs> he's, got, he's got big ears, but uh, I mean, he doesn't have a huge perception bonus. Uh, so you, uh, those of you who follow, who has actually followed him inside? Violette is standing guard outside, essentially, oh, by the carriage or by the house. I mean, we have our stuff in the carriage, but I think that she doesn't want to stray too far from the group, so she might be like wandering back and forth. Anytime someone like peeks out, she's like, but then like when there's no one looking, she's just like, oh, I don't know. The... You know, just like I'm yeah. supposed to be guarding people, things. Mm-hmm. So I you're splitting like, the difference. You're yeah. you're sort of doing a little uh, <laughs> like a guard path between yeah. the carriage and the house. Yeah, uh, and as every- soon as she hears someone like as though they were going to come out, she's like, I'm a professional, and then she slouches again. <laughs> uh, has anyone else uh, stayed outside, or is everybody else following uh, Scudge inside? I think Pagasi would also stand by the door. And kind of keep watch. Very well. And uh, so you're outside, yes? Um, yeah. Very well. Yeah. So the two of you are outside. Uh, that means that Calilly, Hornet, and Hortense have accompanied Scudge inside. As he, and you've already handed him the box, correct? Uh, at this moment, Cornette is bringing it inside, but intends okay. to set it down like on a table or something. It's like, yeah, yeah, just put it over there, fella. Put it over there. Well, now they, yeah. where did I, here we are. As he pulls a large jug uh, forth and pulls uh, a cork from it and begins 
filling some glasses. He's like, that's how this art coming inside. Oh, well, um, one is sort of new to the world, so they're still sort of um, doing a lot of observing, and I think they're more comfortable outside. I assume that's the one that looks like a tree. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, it's sort of normally aren't inside. Well, that's true enough, I suppose. Well, in any case, there's more beer for us. I made this myself. As he pours uh, some glasses of beer and just sort of I thought it was going to be tea. <laughs> well, it is beer. Yeah, and it is, it's warm beer, essentially. Mm. Made by a goblin. So. <laughs> I'm sure there's some excellent goblin breweries, okay? Sure. There could be, yes. But uh, <laughs> not you don't, you're not sure if this guy's homebrewed beer is necessarily up to the standards of the finer goblin breweries. <laughs> yeah. I will give it a cautious uh, sniff, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty hoppy. Uh, <laughs> you're, not sure, you're not sure if he's, he's that good at this. But uh, he, he downs it. He He's like, to your elf! And he downs it pours himself another one. This one he sort of sips as he rubs his hands and he's like, all right there. All right. You brought it all this way, did you? Very good. Very good. It's a big padlock on it now. Uh, as Cornette takes the beer, uh, he'll pull the envelope that is wax sealed out of it and hand it over in exchange. Ah, very official. Very nice. Very nice. As he just rips it open uh, and the key sort of drops out, he picks it up. Here we are. He sticks it in the lock and opens it. And as he does so, he he sort of like turns around so like the lid is facing him and there's there's almost like a light coming up from within. Yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Slam. All right. <laughs> Looks like we're square. You can tell your bosses. That I'm very pleased and I will be using their firm again for any future work I need. Great. So I can just take this paper that you wrote your name on as like a having signed for the property. Yeah, I wrote that. Scudge. <laughs> you want to draw a picture of me as well? I'll put on the suit again. I I think we're I think we're okay. I think uh I think everything is squared. So it is. So it is. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, outside. <laughs> it's always the one guy. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be strunk. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Uh, so, uh, you had a plus six on perception. Is that the yeah. right deal? Yeah. Uh, what is your perception bonus, uh, Pegasi? Plus four. Plus four. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, uh, this time you both notice this one particular uh, guy who can't roll well to save his life. I don't know. It wasn't necessarily always him. I like to think it was always the same person who kept botching his roll. As you see, uh, in the rays of the setting sun, which is just going down, uh, cl very clearly, the silhouette large pointy-eared silhouette of a goblin move between uh, the barn and uh, like, let's say, the privy. You I saw that too? Oh, yes. Hmm. And I think now might be the time for a little more direct conversation. And Violette, very, you know, empowered by her play play acting as a guard, um, will, like, walk out, like, so, like, keeping in, like, a triangle with the house and the, um, the coach, um, but in the direction of the privy and just, like, I can see you! And you hear from behind the privy, I bloody hell! Uh, and then you also hear a bunch of other voices coming out from various part places around the outskirts of the farm. It's just like, you idiot! Ah, 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 flat foot! Uh, as a number of figures oh, no. step into view. Mm -hmm. Some of them still sort of using cover. Uh, 
<laughs> the one that was behind the privy just sort of like peeks out like this. He's like, ah, it wasn't, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. As you see, uh, probably seven or eight goblins. That was uh, a nice couple of them did. pop up uh, on the roof of the barn. Uh, a couple of them from behind uh, the hog trough. <laughs> and yes, there are a number of goblins. Yeah, so when Violet sees probably twice as many as she expected, there's a little like stiffness in her shoulders, but then her usual self confidence returns and she like um, takes her da- rapier out of the scabbard and like, like swishes her cape. And she's just like. I would advise none of you to come any closer. Uh, uh, a large one sort of yells, Don't you bloody swish your cape at me! <laughs> uh, and then you hear another one go, hey, Calm down, Strunk, calm down! Uh, as you see, there are three in particular uh-huh. that seem to step forward. Uh, one is, as mentioned, quite large for a goblin and very muscular. Uh, there is another who is sort of wearing a uh, cap uh, that sort of tra- it's like a, sort of a combo hood cap with a pointed end mm-hmm. and long tassels down the side. Uh, who is seems to be just sort of moving his hands, almost like he stepped forward and is like, "You've been around spellcasters before." Yeah, I have. <laughs> he does seem to have like components and things like that uh, attached to him, and there is one that has three blades strapped to each hand. (laughs) Uh, And, uh, of course, they all have the big pointy ears. This one also has pointy tufts of hair sticking up uh, from the top of its head. Um, Okay. So, do they step forward? Do they say anything, or do they just move forward? Uh, Well, one did that thing of like, don't you squish your cape at me! Uh, uh, and one of them does seem to take the lead. He's like, Hello. We've been following you for some time. Completely unobserved. Uh-huh. I can't believe that at the last moment, we showed our end! As he yells at behind the privy, and you see the one behind the privy duck away again. Perhaps I should introduce myself. You've had some business dealings with my brother. Uh, uh, and I would say at this point, everyone can hear this because they, they're essentially raised voices yelling across a, a farmyard. So, would anyone else like to come out? I think yeah. it, it, the <laughs> yeah, they're all, yeah. yeah. And inside, uh, you can see uh, Scudge just go, What the bloody hell? Oh, I'm not a noun! As he reaches into the box and pulls forth this wicked-looking weapon. Mm-hmm. Uh, those of you who've had any dealings with a with goblins might know that it is called a dog slicer. And it does seem uh, to be a rather, not ancient manufacturer, but you get the impression that it might be a family heirloom. It seemed much use, uh, but does seem to be well cared for, or at least as well cared for as a dog slicer tends to be. <laughs> uh, as he strides forward, I assume the rest of you follow, joining Pegasi and Violette outside as these three goblins stand. And you can also, it's pretty easy to spot the silhouettes of various other goblins in some, in high, some with high ground up on the roof of the barn, uh, oh. over by the hog trough, and and then lastly by the privy as this one pokes its head back out again well well there seem to be quite a few of you but there's quite a few of us as well that's right not now strunk (laughs) i'll do the talking if you don't mind now we seem to be at a bit of an impasse impasse i won in court fair and square Oh, what in court? Well, this is the court of public opinion, brother. Scorch! I will end you. You wield our father's dog slicer with no right to it. 
I have every right. I have the legal right. And they're sort of arguing back and forth. Does anyone interject in their little squabble? I mean, I would love to, but Ooh. if someone else wants to take an opportunity. Okay. Uh, I, Hortense is just going to call out. The court of public opinion holds no legal standing in these proceedings. <laughs> with Wrong. that. With what that, she said. That battle cry. Really uh, intimidating when I say that and get like poofy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Cornette will get in between the two, uh, Scudge and Scorch, and in a similar gesture, when he brings up his arm, there is this light shield that appears between them as well, and he takes a defensive stance. Oh, he's a caster! Yeah, well, so am I. Are we going to let this get out of hand? Are we going to send, send uh, settle this like reasonable beings? I suppose that's up to you, magic man. I don't think we're trying to start anything. I think that this is more of um, um you all came out of the brush and and the buildings it, it, it's it's it's, it, it's very intimidating. I well, there ain't no law against being in the brush as far as I know. Uh, no, but uh, we we do have like a legal situation happening with Scudge and this is not legal. Violet is like, like doing some like stretches, and she's like, "Do you want me to tell you the story of the last person who tried to come at me?" <laughs> you see, the big one is just sort of like he's totally flexing while you're doing this. <laughs> we're like, flex, we're flexing we're at you. Each other up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one that's doing most of the talking, who Scudge called Scorch, just says, "I don't think there's any need." For you to involve yourselves. You've acquitted your duty, have you not? What you were charged with? Delivered the item? I mean, yeah. Well, then why don't you just return to the city then? And let a family work things out amongst themselves. Work things out! Or bloody get you! Sorry. Oh, we can save this dispute for when your friends are on their merry way, Scunch. I'll take you all. I'm not afraid of you. Oh, then you're not afraid of me. Are you afraid of me and Strunk and Snicked and Stick and Stink <laughs> and Scrap and Scab and Steve? And the one from behind the preview sort of leans out and waves. I think that Violet turns to um, the gentleman that won the legal. What's his name? Scrunk? Scourge? Uh, Scudge. 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 Scudge is your is the is the firm's client. And and looks like a Hortense too, and is like, I mean, by the letter of the law, we have finished our duty. But you know, if someone were to give us another job, maybe a payout, I could be persuaded to stick around. Uh, Scudge, would you like to retain our legal and extra legal services? Well, I did mention that I was interested in hiring your firm in the future. I'm not after going to go into town and sign anything, am I? Because I, my need is rather immediate. <laughs> Pagasi, at this point, says to kind of anyone who's listening... One could infer that protecting the client's interests is also protecting the firm's interest, even though we have not been retained as protectors of the client after passing off this item. We could extend that as a courtesy and also to ensure the future investment of future cases from this client. Also, and now Pagasi turns towards all of the goblins and says, you all realize that you lost already once what makes you think you will win again also you lost in a court of law that should be enough for you to stop lost why there is it not no, there weren't no fight we didn't lose nothing it was just there was. a bunch of talking a bunch of talking blah 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 for days and days and then they said we had to give it to him we didn't that, lose nothing we were that cheated was, that was a legal fight if you want to use that terminology, a court case, uh, a, a 
criminal, a, a trial is a fight of, of a type. And you lost. I don't know with that. All right. This being is clearly an educated one and makes a fair point. But perhaps you can consider this our appeal. Hmm? That's, I got that right, right? This is, this is... <laughs> they do have appeals, yeah. yes, in, in court. Uh, well, <laughs> that is the correct if, legal terminology. Yeah. If that is your appeal, then this would be uh, my response. And Pegasi pulls out a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, are, are you intending to enter combat? Are we hurling? I think it's more intimidation right now. I'm not going to throw it yet. I'm just going to pull it out and give, see. Give me, an, yeah. give me an intimidate roll, please. Okay. Intimidation. Oh, no. <laughs> not my best. Does the bomb give me any help? I was like, I was like I'm the improve. I'm, can I aid here? Yes, I'd say, okay. So uh, this will be DC 20. Oh, uh, oh, what... What were you going to do to aid the intimidation? How exactly do you aid this intimidation? Um, so I think that my best threatening moves are usually to like toss around knives and or um, other sharp objects. So she probably um, like a, a bomb comes into hand um, and uh, she had had her rapier out already. So she probably does some like tricky like air flip with a rapier and then catches it and like you know she's using her okay. her, her panache her swash very well so, so this will be you'll make an intimidate roll uh dc 20. okay so so let me know if you succeed or fail or and especially if you critically fail or am i Am I help? Wait, who's? Are you helping me, or so, are you just gonna do the intimidate? Uh, gonna... Well, you are. You are actually doing the intimidation, and uh, right. uh, Violet is doing an aid action. So, got it. First, we resolve that to see how mm -hmm. your aid went. Okay, cool. So. Okay, so am I aiding with intimidation? With I intimidation. Would... Okay. I would say I'm acrobatic, but that's fine. I can try and intimidate. Well, you can you can try you can try it that way if you'd like. Because I right. was more or performance even. I was more like. Okay, doing... yeah. Because you're not actually intimidating yourself. Then very well, I'll let you use performance. You're just doing these flourishes yeah. and uh, moves and whatnot. Yes, she is. She is using her th theatricality. Yes. Okay, um, I <laughs> rolled very poorly. Um, I got a four plus five is nine, which is not helpful. Which is, it is a crit fail. Because uh, that oh, difficulty crap. was 20. I'm so, so you'll sorry. You'll actually be at yeah, minus yeah, one. I usually do better attempt. than that. You I mean have... minus two? Because... Oh, oh. because you're already at minus one? Oh. Yes, that is correct. Okay, oh, <laughs> it's all right. It's kind of fun. Maybe, maybe I accidentally <laughs> fumble a little bit. You slice <laughs> some branches, but they'll grow back. Why couldn't you roll high just this once? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Usually I roll so well. It's it's real bad, y'all. It's, it's Oh, no? Three total. <laughs> okay. So... These things happen. There's a lot of flourishing. There's, like, pulling out a bomb. And... <laughs> All of the goblins burst out laughing. They were just like, ah! <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Look, I'm gonna be honest. You're giving us all a laugh. So, uh, what? I don't even know what that is. As they point to like the bomb thrower, because they probably haven't seen one before. Maybe. Oh yeah, you know. I have the launcher. Uh, yeah, the, uh, they they probably got their own because you got goblin pyros and stuff. But like for whatever reason. They just found this very amusing, and they actually the scorch actually says to you, "All right, kids, I'm feeling in a very generous mood. So why don't you just hit the bricks, and we'll call it a day. And if you don't, I'm afraid we go through you and your fancy magic shield to get to Scanch. How's that sound? And the one that you've heard referred to as Snicked, just sort of like." clangs its claws together and goes, I'm the best damn at what I does! <laughs> and what I does ain't pretty! <laughs> Bub! <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Cornette holds his ground. Yeah, Hortense just sort of, uh, you know, she's been holding the crossbow the whole time, and she just sort of hefts it a little bit and looks at them and says, 
Well, you see, the thing is, we do work for the law firm, but we're not lawyers. So, obviously, we were sent here for a different purpose, and, you know, we have to look good for our bosses, right? Oh, uh, are you the muscle, then? Calla Lily will step forward and sort of loom over, cross her arms and say, No, but we are, as Shimmer sort of, like, comes up over and looks down at him as well. Oh, right. I've had enough of this. I gave you a chance. Kill him! As we all roll initiative. Yay! Ah. So, of course. Now, we will be adding, usually adding our perception uh, okay. into, uh, unless anyone has a good case to make. Uh, we were talking to them. If someone wants to use diplomacy as their initiative instead, or I mean, even... I just failed to be intimidating with my <laughs> performance check, so I don't think I could use performance because I just, you know... That was that was a crit fail, yeah. Yes. That's, that's I mean, true. if we're doing diplomacy, mm. that would put me at a twenty-five. Nice. Ooh. Okay. Yes, I think I, you were. It's you know you were essentially back and forth and involved in you know negotiations. Some of it more successful than others, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would say that that would apply. So if you want to get a twenty-five, I got or, uh, that. And sorry, who uh, who we got the twenty-five? Calla Lily. Calla Lily, thank you. You guys are a little out of sync in mind, so I can't actually tell who's mm -hmm. speaking right now. So Calla Lily at a 25. Anything else above a 20? 19, 18, 17? 18 for I Quiet. Got 18, 18 as well. Oh my god, oh. twins! Whoa. Twinsies, <laughs> literally. My uh, dex is plus two. I believe yours would probably be higher, right? Yeah, my dex is plus uh, four. Yeah, I know you can do it dex ways, but you can also, and especially because you guys are twins, uh, you can basically can decide who would like to go first. You're very used to working together as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, 17. 16? I got 16. Hortense has a 17. 17 for Hortense. And Pagasi, what did you get? Pagasi is pondering why that intimidation did not work, and <laughs> so is distracted and got... A five. <laughs> five. Okay. Thank because you, Bagassi. Watch. <laughs> There's actually a, a swashbuckling thing that I could have taken and didn't, where I just secede my initiative and go last mm -hmm. on purpose oh, because yeah. I'm so confident in myself. But I did not. Lovely. Take that. Yeah. Uh, you can you can still do a variation of that. You can delay your action mm -hmm. if you want. No, I'm okay going with my twin. I think that's fun. <laughs> okay. I have, so, a, let me just I have a quick question about the timeline. Yes. This is this has all been the same day from our show earlier, right? Yes, or... you essentially yeah, you essentially left and uh, oh, uh, I thought we did are you worried about spell slots and things like that? I'd say that there was time to because you guys basically Recover. had to get a carriage, yeah. you had to get I'm all also that. So wondering if my mage armor would still be up because if it's the same day, then it would still be up. But if it's hmm, would you rather recover uh, spells or would you rather have mage armor up? mage armor on <laughs> very well then that is the case i think you cast the most spells so yeah yeah um, let's see. okay all right calla lily what would you like to do you have three actions um well since we were sort of specified not to start fights i think she might just um I, he did quite loudly say, kill him! And they all started <laughs> going for their... Those that didn't actually have weapons draw were drawing weapons. That's it's true. Pretty yeah. Um, I think uh, using the, the act together, I think I might have... I might have my... Um, I might have Shimmer move to a place where if uh, if she were to do her breath weapon, she might hit the most goblins uh yeah they're sort of like in little groups there's a couple up on the barn uh, there's a couple over by uh the hog trough you've got three uh that are uh basically out in the open the, that was the three brothers and then you've got steve who, who is behind the privy and he's the one that kept giving himself away and giving all of them away really mm -hmm. okay then i will have uh i will have shimmer move over towards the ones on top of the barn okay that just for your reference that is stick and stink they're they're both yeah. up there 
It, uh, so Shimmer's going to look down Stink and Stick. What is Shimmer's movement rate? Uh, Shimmer's movement is... Uh, do, 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 25 feet. 25 feet, so How like the barn away? is... The, the You're about 20 feet from the barn, and then it's probably another 30 feet up. Like the roof of the barn is 30 feet mm, up. Then maybe I, I, I won't... Because I'm not going to do the, the Pythagorean theorem at this moment. I believe that's what that is. <laughs> to get to yes, the... you, well... I can't say that it's it's much closer to try to hit either Steve, who's behind the privy, or uh, Scab, no, sorry, Scrap and Scab, who are uh, over by the trough. All right, let's just do Scrap and Scab then. Very well. And um, that is one action. And then I think I'm going to use my two actions to actually um i'm gonna cast gouging claw and swipe at the closest goblin to me what is your range on that that is a touch okay so you would probably now question you've had shimmered move Mm -hmm. but that doesn't consume one of your actions does it i think it does Oh, okay, but you'd move simultaneously, so you'd both have move actions. Uh, it, it says either you or your Eidolon takes an action using the same okay. number of actions. Cool, gotcha. Um, so, if I re- uh, remember right, with the Summoner and the Eidolon, you have a shared pool of actions that you can distribute how you'd like. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise you're just penalized and you're not getting... You're, you're just having subtractions from your actions. So... What is the shared pool? How many actions does... I assume also three, so that Uh, would be six actions total. Oh, right. Okay, so that... Okay, I'm getting it now. I was thinking we were just sharing a turn as opposed to sharing... So, like, I could cast it with... You could basically... The advantage is that if Shimmer only moved and attacked, which seems to be what you want her to do, that means that there's a third... There's a a floating action, which means you could take four actions. I think that's the way it works. That sounds right. Okay, then yes, I will have... Her, well, her attack is two actions. So okay, if I, then... So if, if she moves and does... Three yeah. actions. Yeah, so you've basically... She moves and then attacks, which takes two, so that's all of hers, and then you've got your three to do with what you would like. Um, Even if her attack is a two-action breath weapon? Yeah, because she's taking from that pool of six that you both share, so... Okay. Okay, then yeah, she's gonna do that. She's gonna use her breath weapon, so I'll just take Great. care of her first. Lovely. And that's a reflex save against my set, uh, DC 17. They... And they... What's their reflex? Oh, they're pretty good at reflex, I gotta say. But today's not their day. <laughs> 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 How much damage do they take? They take three points of acid damage. Uh, They scream uh, as this acid mist sprays over them. They are not happy at all. Uh, So that is those two. And then my Eidolon can't use its breath weapon for two turns. Gotcha. Um, So I will then move up to the nearest uh, goblin to me. And what what attack were you going to use? I was going to use Gouging Claw. That's two actions. Well, you know, even if this wasn't the case, I'm going to say that Snicked is closest to you, just so we can have the, the, the fight of the claws. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you move up to Snicked, and you're going to do your attack. Mm-hmm. Please roll to hit him. Oh, drats. That's a nine. A nine misses, I'm afraid. But it's not a critical miss. Uh, as you uh, you manifest these claws, I assume, they're sort of like, are they more energy claws? They, or do they, they actually morph. Grow My hands morph into long claws. So I, I reach back, so wind it's... up, and as it's coming closer, my fingernails extend, and I swipe just miss. Uh, yeah, it's very uh, Lady Deathstrike versus Wolverine as uh, you go in for this for the swipe and Snicked actually brings his claws up like that, 
crosses them and blocks your claws. Uh, you have one action left, I believe, unless that was two actions that, for the, the spell is two to actions. Cast. Um, so I'm, so I'm reading done. the Pathfinder Nexus thing on the summoner. Um, yes. And it says that uh, you uh, you and your Eidolon share your actions and multiple attack penalty. Um, and with Act Together, which is, I think, what you were right. using. Yes. Um, the amount, you can spend two actions to Act Together. And then either you or your Eidolon get two actions and the other one gets one. So basically right. you get like one bonus action by acting together. Oh. Not it's like three a pool bonus of four ish. Yeah. Yeah. Four okay. Five really? Is it, uh, it, yeah. it says if you, if you However, I like, I like the way that turn resolved. So we're going to say yeah. that's what happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's much. fine. I was just... Yeah. Um, oh, no, thank you. Thank you very either much. Either you yeah, or your Eidolon takes an action or activity using the same number of actions as act together, so whichever you put money into, and the other takes a single action, so that would give you that one bonus action there mm -hmm. for act okay. together. But I don't think it's another three entirely, unless your all your actions are one-point actions, in which case it would be three extra. Mm. So if you do, if you spend two actions on act together, then you can do a two action spell and your Eidolon can do a one action thing. And then you still have, you can spend another probably one action on act together and do a one action thing. And your Eidolon could do a one action thing as well. Yeah. I think, okay, I mean, so we'll, this is probably something that we could research in between sessions, but like, yeah. We'll, we'll keep it in mind for the future. But yeah. uh, for right now, Actually, Shimmer can't use her breath weapon again immediately, so yeah. it won't immediately come up. Uh, as we move on to Cornet, what would you like to do? I think we'll have Veal let go on the turn first, and then Cornet will go after. Very well. Violet, what would you like to do? Um, so my speed is 25 feet. Mm -hmm. Is there someone within 25 feet of me? Oh, certainly, yeah. You could you could get over to the trough. Uh, you could probably get to the privy, or you can go straight down the middle and uh, engage the brothers. Uh, Kalalili is there already with Snicked. Um, I want to do Mr. Strong. Um, he was he was buffing at me. He we were we were he was he was we definitely were, buffing we were at variously you. threatening each other. Um, so yeah, I will use one action to do tumble through. Um, so I can stride up to my speed and um. I move into, like, through the space of my enemy, so I'll make an acrobatics check against his reflex. Um, and basically I'm, like, dodging, darting, and rolling through his space in order to throw him off and get some panache. Lovely. Please go ahead and roll that up. Okay, so I got a 10 plus 7, so 17. 17 will do it. Okay, so, um, yeah, I stride up to him and then, you know, fake him out with my, uh, with my rapier, roll through his space, and then, um, because I have gained panache by performing a skill check associated with my action, um, then I will choose to make a, uh, weapon attack, um, confident finisher. Um, it doesn't have to be to finish, it's just named that. Um... So I have panache, and I will attempt to hit with my second action with a rapier. Oh dear! I got a four plus seven is eleven. Does that not not good enough? I'm afraid. No, Strunk sidesteps uh, your rapier okay. and brings up the big knuckle, sort of metal knuckle dusters that he's wearing. Um, uh, if I fail, I still deal half my precise strike damage to the target. Ooh, interesting. So what yes. is half your precise strike damage? Uh, it's half of 2d6, I believe. Roll that up. Because um, I attempted a, con a confident finisher. I was very confident. I did not actually do a finisher, but that's what... But I you were so confident, I was so confident that you actually hit. Four. So that was nine, half of nine. Four I don't know if we round up or down. Four. Yeah. Do we? I mean, usually it's round down. 
Okay. So um, I think that when I, even though I don't hit, um, when I'm pulling my rapier back, I get him a nice slice on the arm or something. Yeah. Um, and that is uses, uses up my panache. Um, but then I have one more action. Very well. Would you like to make a second attack? Would you like to? Um, yeah. So I'll make a second like? attack, but I no longer have a panache, so I'll just do a regular also, one. So also, also at minus minus I, five. Yeah, exactly. I see that. It's got it's it's. it's it has a whole rundown on how Pathfinder works, which I appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pathfinder Nexus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this is, I rolled a 14 and I only get a plus two, so that's a 16 this time. 16. Uh, I'm afraid that comes up just short. Well, that's all right. I'm still giving him the what for. Very well. <laughs> no, I As, again, that, he seems quite light on his feet and he actually adopts sort of a, a boxer's stance. Uh -huh. As you swipe, you manage to catch him on the arm. This time he completely dodges it. And we move on to Cornette. Yeah, Cornette has been standing there with this magical light shield between Scudge and the others. Uh, but sensing that all of this is going on, you can see that this is the turn where the shield ends. But uh, the light from the shield comes to the tip of one of Cornette's fingers, feathery fingers. Uh, and then uh, he uses it to draw a circle in the air. And the light sort of forms a ring, almost like he's touching the rim of a crystal glass. And a note starts to ring out. And then he does it again and again. There are five sort of rings that uh, appear to be making this haunting ringing noise and he blows a little bit of like Seren Ray's breath into it and he casts Haunting Him. Uh, this is a cone attack and it's a sonic mm -hmm. attack. Uh, you echo a jarring hymn that only creatures in the area can hear. The hymn deals sonic damage equal to your spellcrafting ability modifier, in this case would be plus three, uh, with a basic fortitude save for each of them. If a target critically fails the save, it is also deafened for one minute. Okay. And this... you said difficulty what? Uh, it would be DC 16. DC 16. Okay. And well, it they only sure goes failed. out in a cone, so it's not going to affect my friends. Yeah, this is fortitude as well? Fortitude. Okay. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that all three of them failed. Yay! Uh, one of them failed critically. <laughs> so they all take three damage, and one of them is deafened for one minute in addition. And that is a two-action spell. On the third action, Cornette will raise the shield again. Uh, so this happens. You see them all sort of clutch their oversized ears. Uh, and uh, uh, Snick just goes, What was that? And Strong goes, what? <laughs> uh, so you, you, got, you got an idea who's been deaf. Uh, <laughs> as we move on to Hortense. Uh, so uh, Scorch is the one who's been doing most of the talking, right? That's correct. And it's it's pretty clear he's a spellcaster. So uh, with her not crossbow holding hand, Hortense is going to reach out, uh, do a gesture toward him, and cast Daze. Ooh, what I assume that is a will save. Yes. Very well. A and what's the difficulty? Will. And sorry, what? A basic will save. Basic will save. Come on, you, Mr. Wart. Oh, wrong stats. Wrong stats. Here we go. My gosh, these guys can't catch a break. Okay, so what are the effects of days? Um, uh, the uh, if the target. Oh wait, I'm sorry. He has made that after all. Ah, uh, okay. But, but for future reference, what are the effects of days? Uh, the jolt deals mental damage equal to your spellcasting ability modifier, which for me is two. And uh, if they fail, oh, oh, so he still takes the damage. It looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, if he had failed the save, uh, would have been stunned for one round. Okay, Doc. Or sorry, stunned one. He does sort of reel back, uh, but you can see his eyes fix on you 
uh, he does not appear stunned. In fact, he seems quite angry. Uh, As then I'm it, going to use oh, my yes. last action to uh, take the stance for Arcane Cascade. Lovely. And it becomes their turn. A bunch of arrows fly towards you. Well, that's certainly a miss, no matter what your AC is. Uh, Violet, what's your AC? My AC is 18. Uh, an arrow narrowly misses you. Uh, Cornette, uh, you still got the shield up for this turn, right? I do. So my total AC now is 14, and I also have missile block if any of them are aiming at me. Uh, yes. The, so uh, one of the arrows just sort of stops as it hits this shield and falls uh, harmlessly to the ground. If it does more than five damage, it breaks my shield. Your shield is gone, but Dang. it does not okay. do. It doesn't do blow through damage, right? Copy. No. Cool. Uh, I believe that is a. Hit. You've got AC thirteen. Is that right, Pagasi? Yes. Very well. So this will be. Four points of piercing damage as an arrow thuds into your exoskeleton. And, uh, Hortense and Calla Lily, arrows whiz by you. But Snicked is the one who's going to target Calla Lily on this turn. What is your AC? Uh, I believe it's 16 with mage armor. 16. I'm afraid that is a hit. Ow! And that will be five points of slashing damage. Ooh. Could have been much worse. Could have. Glad it wasn't. And strong. What is your AC again, uh, Violet? Uh, my AC is 18. 18. I'm afraid this is a hit with these <gasps> big metal mitts that Strunk is wearing. And that will be eight points of bludgeoning damage. Ay, ay, ay. I'm reeling a little bit. And finally, Scorch. Well, I think we know what he's going to do. Now, ah, what's in a name? So, we've got Violette mm -hmm. and Calla Lily. And I think he can probably, because you're actually engaged with his brothers. And I think he can probably get uh, Hortense as well. This will be a basic reflex save. Seven. Calla will you roll to seven. Okay. And what uh, what is your reflex bonus? Uh, well, I rolled a two, and my reflex is plus five. Oh, okay. All right. So, oh, you didn't roll. Yeah, you, the seven total. Ooh, I'm afraid you will take this damage, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, not too bad. Could be much worse. Uh, it will be five points of fire damage. Uh, Violette and Hortense, likewise. How many points of fire damage? Uh, but uh, what were your save results? Did you oh, your sorry. Score? I was looking at uh, an ability. Um, which save? Reflex. Reflex. Okay. Uh, 18 for Hortense. Gotcha. Ooh, um, I got a 13. 13. Uh, that will be uh, five points for you. Hortense, you are safe. Ooh, fire. 
Uh, as Scorch, much as his name might indicate, put his hands together and these gouts of flame shot out, catching you all you know, in his 15 foot cone. He just got a lot of damage done to me. As it becomes Pegasi's turn. Okay, so, um, yep, Pegasi is watching this, received an arrow in the trunk, and how far is Scorch from me? Uh, Scor oh, I should mention Scorch, uh, so he cast that spell, and uh, he used his last remaining action to run towards his brother, uh, so he's quite close to you now. Oh, towards Scudge. Yep. Ew. Okay, can't have that. He's quite close to me, you said? Um, so I did pull out Scudge, my... Scudge has not gone yet, because he rolled even worse than you for initiative, oh, so... somehow, wow. <laughs> uh, you know what? Here's the thing. Ooh, this is tough, because the bomb launcher actually gives range, not accuracy. Um, oh. I do... I did say I have my bomb out... Um, which would be an interact normally to take it. So can we say that I have my bomb out and ready to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Don't yeah. have to spend you were another. being threatening. You were being intimidating with yes. earlier on. And also trying to save myself in action later. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have the bomb out. Um, and it's going to be the... Do you want me to have decided what it was before? Uh, we can retcon this. What, Thank what, you. Uh, okay. What, what was it? Well, it was going to be the bomb, the alchemist's fire, but now I'm thinking Tanglefoot. No, Might never mind. Her. Yeah, well, Tanglefoot could stop the, the caster, but the caster can still... Oh, wait. Wait, no. Tanglefoot on the caster's arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll, we'll I'll... attempt to ensnare him? Yeah. I, I want to do that. Cool. Okay. So, for Tanglefoot, I do... Uh, um, okay, bum, uh, roll plus three. And... Okay. That's a 16, plus three, 19. 19 is a hit. All right. So, it'll take a status penalty to its speeds for one minute. Mm-hmm. And was that a critical? That wasn't a critical hit, right? That was not a critical success. Okay. Because what was the total? 19? 19, yeah. No, not crit. Okay, I think then, I think that's it. Very well. As this sticky sap flows out all over Scorch, he's like, there will be a reckoning! As Scudge says, you're right, there will be, brother. Uh, and swings and connects. Yes, yeah, good. And you know what? He's gonna swing again. Ooh, okay. So with as Scudge pulls forth the dog slicer that all of this seems to be about, and lays into his brother, and goblin blood flies across the farmyard. We will pause yeah. mid combat at a very exciting cliffhanger. Will the agents of the claw firm, Feather, Whisker, and Horn, be successful, or will they be murdered on their very first outing? Who can <laughs> oh, say? Oh, no! We are oh, level one. Hey. <laughs> yeah. We're level one. We'll see. But thank you very much for joining us here on the claw firm, Feather, Whisker, and Horn. Thank you very much to Demiplane, and we shall see you next time.